Hello everyone, welcome again to today's episode of the Hope Evans. Again, I welcome you to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, New Covenant Parish, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And today is Wednesday, September 15. Our title is God's Order is Social Order. I take that again. God's Order is Social Order. In other words, God is also a God of order. And His order is also a social order. Let's take our study. The Bible in Deuteronomy 18 9 says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Let me take that again. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. Which means there are abominations. In the nation, there are abominations in many nations. There are laws or rules that contradict the word of God, and these are abomination. Abomination is basically things that defiles the plan and purpose and law or the rule of God. Our memory verse today is, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. There we can see that there's a there's a process, there's an order, there is a channel, there's a there's a way God has designed things to operate and to be. The same way God is saying, man is the head of the home. Wife is an helpmate. Right? It does not mean that you should not love each other. But there was a design and there is a purpose to which God has planned things out. He has made it such that you love yourself, you love one another. At the same time, he has made some distinction on what the other person needed most. That is why I say, man, love your wife. Because that's what the woman needs most, love. Woman, respect, humble to your husband. Because that's what the man needs most. Similarly, we'll look at our study. It says, the almighty God is the greatest conservationist of all. That is why all of these examples are laid out across the scripture, which I just mentioned in my introduction. Right from Genesis, we read how God commanded Adam to make sure the to make sure the beautiful garden he had given him did not suffer decay or any pollution. As we see in our memory verse today, like I read earlier, that's Genesis 2, verse 15. That's our memory verse. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. There are many ways one can pollute the land or any God-given gift. So when you talk about pollution, pollution does not focus on just the nation and the land, even your gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit, you can't pollute it. Let's continue our study. The land can be polluted by sin of all sorts, particularly idolatry and human sacrifice. Now when we talk about idolatry, we should also remember that this is a grievous sin against God. Because our God is even a jealous God. And one of the things that can pollute your gifts is sin. In fact, it's that the greatest thing that can pollute your gifts. Sin can pollute your God-given gifts. Even the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. Such that you realize you're not functional or you're not manifesting in line with the purpose of God for your life. Because of sin. Hidden sin, secret sin, is still sin. Let's continue our study. In today's memory verse, we were confronted with the seriousness God attaches to the preservation of his children. In our Bible reading today, God outlines that his choosing people must avoid so must avoid so that the land that was destined to flow with milk and honey might remain blessed perpetually. That reads in our Deuteronomy 18.9 When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of this nation, of those nations. Idolatry is the most grievous sin against God. 
I said it before, even before I study it, is it's, it's the most grievous against God. According to Exodus 20, verse 3, when Adam decided to obey the devil rather than the Lord, he chose another God for himself. Many people think idolatry is when they put an image on the ground and begin to worship it. There are idolaters in the church, people who chose to obey the devil rather than God. They are always at church programs but never do what God wants them to do. The Bible says, Exodus 3 verse 31, And they come unto thee, peop unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear the words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they chew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. This scripture can also be explained with a simple way of saying, uh, I want to make money, I want to make money, I want to make money. Sometimes you make money your God. Because of the law of money, you tend to forget the commandments of the Lord. The commandment of God. Because you want to make money, you neglect the fellowship of the brethren. Because when you're running, you're chasing after the wealth of this world and everything, you forget to spend time with God. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't work. But there's a time for work and there's a time for fellowship. Don't compromise fellowship because of money. Before you know it or before you realize it, you've made that money or the purchase or the, or, the, or the running after or the chasing after money and wealth your God. So it's not until you have a golden image. Your actions, your love, what you love, your actions can dictate what you are serving. You begin to serve money instead of serving God. You compromise your faith because of the riches of this world or because you want to fit into that society, you want to fit into that community, you want to fit in, you compromise your faith. Compromising your faith is not in the agenda or in God's standard. Let me take that again. Compromising your faith is not God's standard. So you want to fit into the society you chase chasing after money or you want to just fit in, you change your character or behavior, whatever that you know is against the will and the laws or the commandments of God for your life. All of this is sin and sin kills. By disobeying the word of God, people pollute the land, bringing eternal cause upon themselves and generations after them. This was exactly what the first man did and God caused the land because of him. Remember? Adam. He commits sin. But God did not just only punish Adam. He caused also the land because of Adam. To keep the land which the Lord has given unto us to inhabit, we must obey him and live according to his word. When we do this, our land will be free from evil and it will yield great increase for our pleasure. According to Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13. Again, Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 13. I encourage you to study that scripture to fully understand what we are explaining today. Our God is God of order. God's order is social order. Even on social media, do not live a second life. You live a different life on social media, which is totally different from the life you live in your real world, in the real reality of things, in the real sense of things. You pretend to be what you are not on social media just to gain likes, comments, attractions, compliments, knowing full well that is not who you are. Live your life in line with the word of God. Let the word of God be your watchword and let it guide your heart in your decision in all you do. Our God's order is social order. There is no zigzag with God serve him trust him love him walk with him that is the one for you I encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ today and begin to live according to the word of God from now Amen I pray the Lord guide your heart as you receive this word in Jesus name thank you for joining me today I hope to see you tomorrow 
in our next episode of The Open Evans.